Good morning students. We will discuss about graph based protocols. Earlier we have discussed about 2PL, two phase locking protocol, straighted 2PL, regress 2PL, conservative 2PL. All these are variants of the locking based protocols. Now we will discuss another variant which is a graph based protocol. Now we will discuss what is a graph based protocol, how it is different from the phase lock based means the other variants like 2PL, straighted 2PL. Now, as I said, it is a graph based protocol. I think everyone know what is a graph. A graph is nothing but a collection of nodes and the edges. Now, here what are the nodes? Here the nodes are the data items. If I say a graph, now this is a graph. Okay. Now, if you see the node, A is the one data item, B is another data item, C is another data item, then what is this edges represent? After data item A, you will come to a data item B or data item C. So the data item B and C are depend on the data item A. Okay. Now you can sir, you can ask me sir, you are saying that graph, but you have drawn the tree. But as the name says that it is a graph based protocol, but it is a the implementation is a tree based protocol only. I think everyone know what is the difference between a graph and a tree. Whereas a tree it does not have a loops. Now, why I am stressing that it does not have a loops that if we have a loops like if I have A, B, C, then if from C if I have a A, then sometimes it may create a loops. It means obviously if you have a loop, then we will face the deadlock problem. Okay. So to avoid those deadlock problem, they have implemented as a tree based protocol, but the name says that it is a graph based protocol, but still the implementation is is a tree based protocol only. So now let me discuss the few concepts uh, related to the graph based protocol. One is that earlier we have discussed about the phase based locking protocol, two phase locking protocol, whereas we have a growing phase and sinking phase. During the growing phase, we will keep all the locks. During the sinking phase, we will release all the locks. Now, what are the locks we use to keep in the locking protocol? Since we have a shared lock and we have an exclusive lock am i right or wrong we used to have a shared lock which is for read purpose exclusive lock is for both read and write if you want to write any data i means if you want to modify any data item we have to take the exclusive lock whereas in graph based protocol we have only exclusive locks there are no shared locks are there in the graph based protocol there is a one point you should remember Okay, and the second point is that you can please listen carefully. If I have let's take the D, E, F, and G like that it is there. Now you can keep the first lock on any data item. Means I can keep the data first lock on here, or I can keep the first lock here, I can keep the first lock here, anywhere I can keep the first lock. Meaning is that I can lock any data item at first. Meaning, let's take that I have locked on the B because I can lock on any data item. So I have locked on the B. Is it clear? The second point says that you can lock on any data item. Now the third important point is that once you have locked the B, you can able to lock D and E only. What is the meaning of this one is if you want to lock any data item then the parent should be locked first. If the parent is locked, then only the subsequent chains are locked. The meaning is that if you have locked the B, then you can able to lock on D and E, but you cannot lock on F and G. Why? Because you did not lock C. Okay. Similarly, if I want to lock C, may I lock it on the B? If I can I lock on C? No, because I have to lock it, then only I can lock C. Are you able to understand? So, the first lock can be on any data item. Subsequently, the other locks can be allowed only if the parent is locked. Okay. So, I hope everyone has understood this point. And the third point is that you can release any lock at any time. Meaning is that, let's take that. You have locked the B. Okay. Then you have locked the B. It is permitted because you have locked the D. And then you have locked A, yeah, because this is a root node, there is no parent, you have locked A. 
Then you have log to the C. Yeah, it is also around because already the parent of the C is A it is already log. Now log on G it is also around because log on C is permitted. Now the third point is that you can release the lock at any moment. Meaning is that I want to release after all these operations, I want to release the lock on the B. Yeah, you are permitted. Okay, you can release the lock on any data item at any moment. Now, once you have released the lock, you cannot again keep a lock on this particular data item. Meaning is that already I have kept a lock and I have released it, subsequently I cannot again keep a lock on the particular data item. Okay, so I hope you have understood these points. One is that it is allowed only exclusive locks, there is no shell locks in the other off based protocol and the operations is, it is a operate on a tree based protocol only and you can lock the first, any data item at any moment, first only. Subsequently, if any data item, if you want to lock, then the parent should be locked. And the third point is that you can release the lock at any moment. But the fourth point says that once you release the lock, again you cannot lock it. Now you can ask me what is the advantage of this tree-based protocol. Sir, we have discussed about 2PL, all these things. Now what is the advantage of tree-based protocol or drop-based protocol is that it is deadlock free. It is a deadlock free because you are giving an order of execution meaning is that you cannot uh, see A to B is only order is provided but B to A there is no order so first you so then it will meaning is that there is no cycles here because if you because in operating system course you will see about the various causes of deadlock one is the circular weight okay and one of that one is a deadlock problem means you have no preemption there are four rules will be there for the deadlock one is no preemption circular weight hold and weight all these things whereas in this one there is no circular weight if you see a to b is only there but whereas b to a is not there so it is not circularly waiting so that's why i can say that it is a deadlock free protocol okay so in the next video i will discuss the examples related to the graph based protocol thank you